seems to be accelerated time frame on this, which is encouraging. Right. They're using a different technique than normal. So normally we would inject proteins directly into the person's body at that immune response. They are injecting something called mRNA or messenger RNA, which is actually the body's cells will translate that into the proteins, which will then cause the immune response. So by doing it in this different way, they're able to create this much faster. If it's effective, they'll also be able to mass produce it much faster. So although we are many months away from knowing that, um, it's certainly a very encouraging start. Okay. That's vaccine. I want to talk about testing. From Canada's top public health authority yesterday, Dr. Teresa Tam, she was tweeting out that here's the figure, about 42,000 people in Canada have been tested to date, both at the provincial and national public health lab perspective. There's, I mean, we're talking about disaster with testing in the United States, but I'd love your perspective on how well we're doing and if we have enough tests done to give us a really thorough picture of coronavirus in this country. So we're doing okay. Uh, we're ramping up quickly, uh, but we just don't have enough tests right now. What we're limiting ourselves to is really people with symptoms and a significant risk factor. So that means symptoms of a cold and either travel or exposure to somebody with COVID-19 or people who are really sick in hospital. What we'd love to be able to do is just to test anybody who has symptoms of a cold because we know that there's community transmission. So you don't really need a risk factor anymore to possibly have this. Um, and the difference is, you know, if you have COVID-19, whether you have that or just a common cold, the idea would be self-quarantine so that the management is not really different from the person's point of view. But if we were able to test that person and if we knew they had COVID-19, we could be much more aggressive about their contact tracing and then we could quarantine a whole bunch of people who were directly exposed to them. And ultimately, that's how we would get this under control. That's what they did in South Korea. So we're still not there. We're about one-fifth as many tests per capita as what they did in South Korea. So we need to get there. And, and how do we get there? Is there a push on manufacturers to ramp up their numbers? They talk about high, fl I think it's high flow through production or something like that. Just pump them out if they can. I mean, do you feel that yeah. this is going to be done? So there's a couple of things. So one is the people who, who are already approved, kits that are already approved by Health Canada, we're asking those companies to ramp up. But Health Canada is also preparing to approve a whole bunch of new kits, a whole bunch of new products. So new things will enter the market. Um, the other thing, I'll give you an example. So I, I work in Quebec as well, and my institution in Quebec is asking us not to do tests for seasonal flu anymore and for other viruses because some of the same chemicals that are used in those kits are also used in COVID-19 testing. So we're starting to move resources over to COVID-19 okay. testing. So you need those chemicals. I'm wondering about swabs too because we're starting to hear from a number of hospitals mm -hmm. in Quebec and also in Ontario and southwestern Ontario, for example, that they're almost out of swabs, which are part of the testing kit. How much does that complicate yeah. things? Very much. Uh, it's, you know, there, we're starting to start, we're worrying about for people in the testing centers and people in hospitals. We're worrying about the swabs and then we're worrying on the back end about the chemicals needed to actually run the assay or the test. So everything in this sort of chain, this whole process is starting to become in tight supply and swabs is one of those. It's the same idea. We need manufacturers to push those swabs out and we need to be judicious about how we're, who we're swabbing and how we're using All these right. swabs. So if worst case scenarios come into play. We keep talking about how coronavirus affects people. The most, the greatest number of people will be affected, just have minor um, problems dealing with coronavirus. But of course, there are some people who will become very sick and we are seeing some fatalities as a result. But if they need real respiratory support, if they need ventilators, what's your assessment of the national picture, whether we have enough to deal with what could be a really critical need? So, I mean, I think this is the biggest worry uh, for myself and for other healthcare workers. Uh, if you just do a back of the envelope, uh, Heather, if you look at modeling studies, modeling studies suggest that 30 to 70% of our population might eventually get this virus. If you go at the low end of that at 30% of, of the Canadian population, that's about 10 million Canadians who can get it. If you look at the China data, about 5% of people well, ultimately, we're sick enough to need a ventilator. So that 5% of 10 million is 500,000 Canadians would ultimately need critical care and a ventilator. If you assume that the average person spends about a week on a ventilator, we have 5,000 ventilators at any one time in this country. So we would need to flatten that curve enough that these 500,000 cases occur over 100 weeks, not to run out of ventilator capacity. 
And if in, in any one given week we have 6,000 people who need a ventilator, then we're going to be in a situation like Italy where 1,000 people just won't get a ventilator. Um, and that's what's really scary for all of us in society, particularly for healthcare workers who might have to make those decisions. Um, the good news is, though, that these modeling studies are just that. They're, they're just models. Um, and we can change the model. We can bend that curve by doing what people are doing now, which is self-isolating. Uh, and we can hopefully uh, make these models wrong. I was going to say, the importance of social distancing and self-isolating rings through in everything that you're saying there. Hashtag flatten the curve. And we understand why healthcare professionals and health officials are saying that over and over again. Dr. Gupta, come back, please, if you would. We'll have more questions, but I really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Dr. Samir Gupta.